All right, and welcome back to the channel. Today, I'm going to be showing you what lossless scaling is and how to get it running in American Truck Sim or for any game for that matter. Whether you have heard of lossless scaling or have been wondering about it, here is what it is. It is all about frame generation. So it is all about using AI to insert additional frames into your gaming. Now, lossless scaling is my secret sauce and I use it in all of my video games, including American Truck Simulator. So it is available on the Steam store. It is $6.99 USD. And trust me, it will be the best $7 you have ever spent. And you will want to run loss of scaling as an administrator. It should ask you when you open it, definitely click yes. I am using LSFG 3.1. Now for a while I was using LSFG 2.3, but 3.1 update came out, I want to say maybe a month or two ago. It is currently August, 2025. And I went ahead and switched over to it and I have been enjoying the update. Uh, I have not noticed any performance issues or uh, lack of features or lack of usability for that matter. Now for me, I have my mode fixed, my multiplier set to two, and my flow scale set to 70%. Now let's talk about what does all of this mean? Keep in mind, my setup, I am using a NVIDIA G-Sync monitor at 144 Hertz, and I am running a QHD resolution, which is also known as a 2K resolution, also known as, I guess, 1440p. Don't quote me on any of that, but essentially I'm not running a 1080p monitor, nor am I running a 4K monitor. Your setup may be different, and we'll talk about why you would want to maybe do fixed versus adaptive. Let's say you're playing American Truck Sim and you've got a smooth, pretty steady frame rate, and that is going to be the key thing to do before you even enable loss of scaling, is set up your game to run smooth before you enable loss of scaling. And what do I mean by smooth? I'm not talking about uh, a certain frame rate you wanna hit, what I'm talking about is that average frame rate that you will get consistently. So that will mean adjusting your settings. Sometimes you might have to dial it down a bit to get smooth frames per second. Even if it's 20 frames per second, if it's steady, you'll still see some performance gains with lots of scaling. But if you've got your settings cranked up and you know as you're playing your game, your frames per second are going up or down depending on you know what region you're in or what you might be doing, that's going to make life a little bit more difficult when you're using loss of scaling because when it goes to scale, it's not a guarantee that it'll be smooth and that you won't notice loss of scaling attempting to generate frames when your base frame rate is inconsistent. So it's incredibly important that you take a little bit of time to adjust your own settings before enabling loss of scaling so that it is as steady as it can be. Okay, so for me, I use mode fixed because it maintains a more consistent performance. And because, like I said, I've adjusted my base game settings without using loss of scaling. If you adjust your settings properly without loss of scaling and try to tune some of that out, you'll have much better luck running with either mode, to be honest. But again, for my case, I prefer fixed. I encourage you to try out both. For multiplier, now this is how many frames it is going to inject in between each frame your graphics card is outputting. So essentially, if you are getting 30 frames per second without loss of scaling, and you have the multiplier set to one, it will inject one new frame for every frame your video card has generated. Now, if you bump this up to two, you're now saying, I wanna inject two frames for every one frame my video card is processing. Okay, well, that's gonna take your game from 30 frames per second again, all the way up to 90 frames per second. You don't need to crank up the multiplier. You really don't. Uh, unless it has to do with how many frames you're starting with, the higher you have your multiplier, the more work the program is doing. And the loss of scaling is not about completely becoming this you know, resource intensive tool. It's actually a pretty light tool when it's running. It's about just enhancing the performance of your game without and with using loss of scaling. Now your flow scale. Your flow scale, I think, the simplest way to put it is to read the last section here. It is set based on your resolution of your monitor. So if your flow scale is higher, that typically means you're going to have a lower resolution. So a 1080p monitor, you would want your flow scale really set to, you know, 100%. If you were running a 4K monitor, you would set your flow scale to ideally 50%. Now, this is something that you'll want to set and sort of forget. You can mess with it a little bit, but to be honest, once you set it up based on your resolution, you can just leave it as it is. 
Now, if you're doing any sort of streaming or gaming and recording, I've found the best luck using the Capture API of WGC. I don't know if it's default. I think often it might be DXGI. I've had games crash when I've been using DXGI, so I've used WGC. My cue target is one. If you're familiar with frame latency or frame generation in general, uh, this is just saying that I want one frame queued you know, for every frame that's generated. Over here on the right side, type, I just have it off. I don't have anything specific going on here and I don't do actually any scaling. I'm not looking to scale the game from 2K resolution to 4K resolution. I'm not really interested in that. I'm just looking for frame generation. So if you're only looking for frame generation and you don't need scaling, well, this video is probably not for you because my scaling is set to off. For rendering, my sync mode is default. Uh, I don't use VSync, and there are plenty of reasons why uh, for my setup that I actually have VSync disabled in all of my games, mainly for me because, again, I've tuned my graphic settings in any of my games to not need VSync to avoid tearing because my frames per second are higher. I'm running a G-Sync 144 hertz monitor, so I don't need that. Um, so sync mode for me is default because my VSync is off. Now, if you had VSync on, I think you would choose the VSync setting. But again, default handles without having VSync enabled pretty well. Max frame latency, I think the default here is set to three. I wouldn't mess with that. Now, I have a HDR monitor, but I don't use the HDR support. So I have that off. You'll also notice I have G-Sync support off. For me, again, I don't need it. So now, if you want to use lots of scaling, you're first going to fire up your game. Your game's going to need to load in correctly, right? So if you're an American Truck Sim, I like to make sure that I get past the American Truck Sim loading screen to where I can select my save game or my profile. Once you're in the game, you could tab over back to loss of scaling. You would hit scale, and you'll see a countdown appear here, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. In that five-second window, it is up to you to go back into your game and then loss of scaling will capture whatever game you're playing in full screen mode and start to generate frames for that application. Once you've done that and loss of scaling is enabled, you don't need to come back to it. You, you're just playing your game at that point. And that's what I love about loss of scaling. Your settings are set pretty much once or you might have different profiles for specific games, but you generally fire it up, hit scale, go back into your game and it starts generating frames and you're just playing the game like nothing else is happening. And that is beautiful simplicity. If you enjoyed this or you appreciated it, go ahead and hit that like button. If you'd like to see me play some video games like American Truck Sim or x go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Of course, thank you so much. Take care.